Hi, my name is Ben Hedges and I'm a SharePoint developer and instructor for Point 8020. In this video I will demonstrate how to create and debug a state machine workflow for SharePoint 2010 using Visual Studio 2010. SharePoint 2010 offers two workflow templates, one for creating sequential workflows and one for creating state machine workflows. In this video I will show you how to create a state machine SharePoint workflow. State machine workflows transition from state to state rather than the transition from activity to activity that is found in a sequential workflow. Before I start building the workflow, I will open SharePoint and show you a document library that I have created that the workflow will be associated with. This is a standard document library called Projects. It has the default columns associated with the document library. I will create a new project in Visual Studio and for this example, I will expand the install templates and click Visual Basic. In the list of templates, I will select the project type of State Machine Workflow. I will provide a name for the project. In the What Local Site Do You Want to Use for Debugging box, I will ensure my site is selected. As you can see, I can only choose to deploy this workflow as a farm solution. I will leave the default name for the workflow and ensure that the workflow is a list type. Now I get to select the list or library that I want to associate this workflow with. I will click the first drop down and from the selections of lists and libraries I will click the projects library. I also have an opportunity to specify the list to store history items in and the task list that should be used to store tasks that are created in this workflow. I can then choose how the workflow will be started, either manually by users, automatically when an item is created or automatically when an item is changed. When the design surface appears, I get a workflow initial state activity and the ability to add my own activities. To demonstrate some of the power of the state machine workflow, I will model a document approval process. Sequential workflows are often used for document workflows, but the state machine workflow that I will create is a bit more complex, as I will allow a document to move from one state to another, and importantly, I will allow a document to go back to an earlier state if the document has not been approved. I will create states for in progress, review and complete. When the document is in progress it will remain in that state until a task associated with the document instance is set to complete. The state will then change to in review. At the review state the document can either be approved and the state changed to complete or the document can be returned to the in progress state. To start modeling the workflow I will drag the states that I require onto the design surface. I will rename the workflow one initial state activity to initial state. I will rename the state activity one activity to state in progress. I will rename the state activity two activity to state review. And I will rename the state activity three activity to state finished. In a state machine workflow, the initial state and final state need to be specified. I will right click initial state and choose set as initial state. I will right click state finished and choose set as completed state. Notice that there's an event driven activity in the initial state. I'm going to double click that and it takes me to a new view of the workflow. Notice that in the top left hand corner of the page I have a breadcrumb control that describes where I am in the workflow. At this point the workflow appears like a sequential workflow and I can drag and drop activities onto the initial state and define the initialization state. In the initial state all I will do is move from the initial state directly to the in progress state. I will drag a set state activity underneath the on workflow activated activity. The set state activity will be an important activity type that I will use in various parts of this workflow. It's a straightforward activity that, when reached, moves the workflow from one state to another. I will build the necessary conditions that define when and if a set state activity is reached, and I will use that to control the workflow. In the initial state I want to move straight to the next state, so if I click set state activity and then look at its properties, I can see that all I need to set is the target state name. I will click State in Progress. To get back to the complete workflow, I click Workflow on the design surface. The main workflow view appears and you can see that Visual Studio has drawn a line between the initial state and the state in progress based on the configuration I have just completed. 
I'm going to need to do a few more things in the state in progress state. First, I will create a task that I will assign to someone for them to finish the document. To create a task, I right click in progress state and from the options I can click add state initialization. This allows me to define activities that occur whenever this state is entered through a state transition. I want to create a task whenever this state is entered. So under SharePoint workflow items, I will use a create task activity and drop that to the state in progress activity. Just like a sequential workflow, I need to keep my correlation tokens in sync. So I want to associate a correlation token with each type of state. To create a new correlation token, I can just type the new token into the property box. I will call it in progress token. For the owner activity, I will select the state, so I pick state in progress. For my task properties, I need to create a new task ID. So if I click the task ID dialog, I will create a new member name and create a field. I will do the same thing with task properties. Then in the method invoking property, I will generate an event handler. I'll add some code to this handler. This code is fairly straightforward. I create a new task ID. The task properties are then set with the title for the task, the person who will be assigned the task, and the due dates for the task. I will now go back to the design surface. I will click workflow on the breadcrumb to get back to the workflow view. When the code enters the state in progress state, that task will be created. Next I will set up an event handler to watch that task so I can determine when the state needs to transition into another state. I will right click the state in progress and choose add event driven option. From the toolbox, I will drag an on task changed item and set the properties associated with on task changed. I will set the task ID equal to the task I created earlier. Now I need to set the after properties and before properties, and I will go ahead and create a new field for these. And I need to set the correlation token equal to my in progress token. I will generate the event handler. And in this event handler, I'm going to make sure that my before and after properties are in sync with the on task changed object. I will click the design surface. After I have done that, I'm going to see if the task has changed, so I'm going to add an if else activity. I want this if else activity to use a code condition, so I will view the code page and add some logic for that. You can see this code is fairly straightforward. I am checking if the after properties associated with the on task changed is 100% complete. That is represented as a value 1. If it is, then the result is set to true. If not, the result is false. I will now go back to the design surface, and in the if else activity one, I will set that condition to be equal to the code condition of ready for review. So the next step is to transition into the state review state if it is ready for review. So I will use one of the set state activities under that branch and set the target state name for that activity to state review. If the event fires and the percentage isn't 100%, then the if else branch 2 will run, and as there's nothing in that branch, the state will not be altered. The state will remain in the state in progress, waiting for the next change on the task. I will click the workflow and return to the workflow overview. You can see that Visual Studio has updated the link to reflect the workflow. I will now do the modifications required for the state review. You will see these steps are very similar to the last ones. First, I will add a state initialization activity, and in here, I will add another create task. 
This time I will create a task and assign it to a different user to make sure that they review the document. For the correlation token for this task, I need a new correlation token. I will create that. As before, I need to create a field for task ID and task properties. I will do that now. I am then going to generate an event handler for method invoking. In this event handler, I will add some code and step you through it. You can see the new GUID for the task and the title, assigned to and due date are configured. This time user Andy J will be assigned the task. I will go back to the workflow design surface. I will right click the stage review and click add event driven. I need to look at the on task changed activity. So let me get that and then set the correlation token. I'll set the task ID equal to the task ID I just created. And then for the before and after properties, I will again bind to a new member and create a new field. Next I will generate an event handler. And then I will make sure my before and after properties are synchronized. I now need to determine if the state needs to transition to another state. To do this I'm going to add an if else activity and I will hook this up to a code condition. So I will open the code and add another procedure that will determine if I should transition to another state. I will add the procedure and step you through it. This is very similar to the code I used before. I will check if the after properties associated with the on task changed is 100% complete. I will now go back to the design surface and in the if else activity 3 I will set that condition to be equal to the code condition of review finished. I will now extend the logic in this section a little more. I will add a check to find out if the document has been approved. If the document has been approved the workflow will transition into the finished state. However, if the document has not been approved then I want to send the document back to the in-progress state. To do that I will nest an if-else activity inside my initial if-else activity. Let me add the code condition that this if-else will use. I will simplify the logic here and look for the text approved in the description field. Now as this will be formatted with markup I need to add a couple of div tags to the text that I will be looking for. I will go back to the design surface and add a code condition for the latest if else statement using the doc approved method. I will go back to the design surface again and I'm going to drag on two set state items. If the document is approved I will set the state to state finished. If the state isn't approved I will set it to in progress. Visual Studio will deploy the workflow and associate it with the target library. If I wanted to create a breakpoint in the code I could do so and Visual Studio will handle that. This makes testing and debugging straightforward. I will upload a document to the project library and then look at the tasks. You can see the task called finished document that has been assigned to the user Sanjay. I will impersonate Sanjay's role and edit the task. I will set it to 100% complete and click save. A new event is created and assigned to Andy. I will now take on Andy's role and I will edit the item and set the complete percentage to 100% but I will not approve the document. 
I will not type approved in the description text box. The state transitions to in progress state and a new task is created for Sanjay again. OK, now let me complete the task again. And this time as Andy, I will complete the task and add the text approved in the description field. The tasks are complete and if I return to the project library, my workflow is complete as well.